Mark, look, can you understand, number one, why folk like me and a large portion of Conservative members are very angry with Rishi Sunak because of the fact that he backstabbed Boris Johnson when he was meant to be his Chancellor and, and trying to save us from this economic hellscape that we're in? Well, look, I don't... Um, thank you for what you said about the, the stuff that, that I did on COVID, where you and I actually were... were yes, we were in full agreement there. Um, it's worth saying, of course, that in government during that period, mm. Rishi Sunak actually was one of the people on our side who was trying to argue for a more balanced approach to COVID. Uh, and actually, when we did have to take difficult decisions, of course, when he was brand new as being Chancellor, mm. uh, you know, re re understood the concerns of the public and actually responded very quickly and rolled out furlough and all of the support that means that millions of jobs and thousands of businesses were saved. So actually, I think for those th reasons, it's one of the reasons why I think he's the right person. But on, on your point about, mm. about the Prime Minister, look, I'm afraid the sad truth is I voted for Boris Johnson to be leader of the mm. Conservative Party. The sad truth is the only person responsible for his downfall is himself. Poor decisions and not being straight about them. And Rishi Sunak was very loyal to him for a very long period of time, longer actually than probably some people think he should have been. Uh, and, but at some point, given everything that happened with what happened with Chris Pincher, the fact the government wasn't straight about it and the Prime Minister wasn't straightforward about it, there comes a point when you, you just can't mm. continue in office. And I, that's the point that he reached. He, and, and by the way, he wasn't the only one. I mean, no, no. a huge number of ministers yes. resigned from the government. But, but I'm not talking about once he resigned. Mm -hmm. be, because what, what the suggestion is... And look, I'll, I'll play yeah. you some, something. Sure. But the suggestion is that he had been plotting for months. So have a look at... This is what the okay. Culture Secretary, Nadine Dorries, yep. had to say about this. And some difficult decisions were taken, like when we wanted to lift restrictions from COVID. It was very difficult to get the Chancellor at meetings to, to commit to any policy at all. None of us really looked up. We didn't take our noses away from the work that we were doing to actually really pay any attention to what others might have been doing behind the scenes because we were all working so hard and frankly that's why so many people have been shell-shocked for the last few days it's one of the reasons why you've seen the kind of chaotic situation we have with individual campaigns Rishi had been planning his campaign to the letter launched it the day it was ready and everybody else is kind of like blindsided and thinking what's going on we've all been working so hard how can he have been that campaign ready? Well, the answer is he wasn't working so hard. We all were. So how do you respond to that? Well, look, I, I'm not going to criticise Nadine personally, but that account, I, I'm simply not true. I mean, there was a very interesting article... But he had by... the website registered, the Ready for oh. Rishi website. Yeah, that, that, that was, was registered, registered back in yeah, but December. Lots of people register things so that other people don't steal the websites. But I can tell you, there's an article by one of my colleagues, Andrew Murrison, a very respected mm. colleague who actually was very frustrated with Rishi when he was Chancellor, because Andrew went to see him, very frustrated with the Prime Minister, thought the Prime Minister needed to go, tried to get Rishi to, to you know, go along with that, and was very frustrated when Rishi remained loyal to the Prime Minister. He worked incredibly hard as Chancellor, um, delivering the spring statement, all of the help for people on energy. So that, that characterisation I simply don't recognise. Um, and, and yes, he's, he's uh, run an effective campaign, but it hasn't been being planned for ages. Um, you know, colleagues came together uh, after the Prime Minister uh, had to go. And by the way, as far as the Prime Minister is concerned, you talked about our party members. When the prime, by the time the Prime Minister left, just before and just after, a majority of Conservative Party members felt it was right he should go. And a majority of Conservative voters who voted for us mm -hmm. in 2019 thought he needed to go because of what happened. And it is a tragedy that he had so much potential uh, and he wasn't able to deliver on it. I don't take no pleasure in it, but it did need to happen. And, and that's what the majority of our members think and the majority of our members of parliament think. But the polls, we now need to the, focus the polls on the future. don't back that up and the surveys of the Conservative members don't back that up. It, it feels like there's a massive disconnect oh, between the Tory MPs well, at Westminster well, let's see. and the Conservative well, Party first members. Of all, well, first of all, of course, Tory party MPs go to Westminster for parliament, but, but we do all go back to our constituencies. That's where I live. I live in my constituency and I come to parliament for things. I talk so you to, must have spoken so to I, constituents I, that are angry about the way that Boris Johnson's uh, been. No, pleased. most of my constituents wanted him to go. Most of my constituents are very pleased he's gone uh, and, and most of my party members are as well. So uh, I, I think I reflect them very well. And I, I would say on these polls of party members, 
They're snapshots, not predictions. And I think now that we're down to two candidates, we've got two great candidates. Both of them are fine people. They're good people. I happen to think Rishi Sunak's the better person to be prime minister. They're both great people. We've got fantastic talent in the Tory party. That was a fantastic range of candidates. The Labour Party is really cross because in September, we're either going to have our third female prime minister <laughs> or our first person who's an ethnic minority yeah, and, and, they go the and the Labour Party finds that incredibly annoying. Uh, Alison Pearson, who is obviously very respected mm -hmm. Daily Telegraph columnist and incredibly in touch with Tory party mm -hmm. members, she thinks it would be electoral suicide, and she's been very clear mm -hmm. on this, she's written yeah, yeah. about it, for the party to elect in the midst of a cost of living crisis mm -hmm. uh, the richest politician mm -hmm. that we've ever had in this country. Mm -hmm. do, do you think Rishi's personal wealth, I mean... Look, I, I, I do, I'm not into the politics yeah. of envy, but he was wearing, you know, £450 mm. loafers on that building site the other day. Do, do you think his personal wealth, given the, the era that we're in, could be a difficulty for your campaign? No, let me pick up two points that, that you quote Alison on there. Well, the first point, just on the facts, the opinion polls say that Rishi Sunak actually is the only person in this race who is the one that can beat Keir Starmer, right? We've just had two TV debates last weekend... Uh, and particularly the ITV one, the public, so, so not Tory party members admittedly, mm. but the public said that he was the clear winner. So the polling says he's the person that can win an election for us. On the point about his wealth, and, and of course most of that money is actually his, his wife's mm. um, money, uh, I'd, I'd say this. First of all, you judge a man by what he does, not by um, his background. You know, his, his mum was a pharmacist, his dad was an NHS GP, he doesn't come from money. Um, he uh, delivered for us, you mentioned it yourself, and I talked about it in the pandemic, he understood the fears that people had about their jobs and their businesses, and he responded. And he did so this year as well, responding to the fears people have about energy prices. So I'd say judge him on that. And the final thing I'd say is, and he, he set this out, I think, in the... ITV debate, if I'm allowed to mention mm. mainstream media. Yes, um, yes you are. Was, that was talked, bad for the party, he, though, he, that debate. He, though, but he course. talked about his father-in-law's um, uh, rise. Yeah, and it yeah, was, yeah. you know, he, he's a man who started a business with nothing. Yes, he, he didn't company, run away from it. And it was a, yeah. a man who now employs thousands of people in Britain. Yeah, yeah. That's the Conservative yeah. story. We want more people to have those opportunities. And I think that is a... That's something that you can connect to people with. Just, just finally, Mark, you're obviously former chief. Where yep. Gavin Williamson is involved in this campaign... Can you just categorically assure us all that there were no dark arts going on during this campaign, no lending of votes? Because there is a real theory from the Penny mm -hmm. Mordaunt campaign yeah. that you lot lent votes potentially to Liz Truss because you didn't want to face Penny Mordaunt in, in the runoff. Can no, you categorically confirm that? I can categorically that's deny untrue? that. The, the person running the whipping operation was a guy called Mel Stride. Yes. He was a very Mel, senior yeah. whip in my whip's office when I was chief whip. He's a straight dealer, uh, and we gave a very simple message to every single Conservative MP that wanted Rishi Sunak to be Prime Minister, which was if you want him to be Prime Minister, vote for him every single round of the... So no vote lending went on at all? No, that. not at okay. all. And we, we specifically spent a lot of time telling people not to do that because we wanted to get the maximum possible number of votes for Rishi. Mark Harper?